Alright, how's it going today, guys? So, gonna have a little bit of a crucibling episode today. And let me go outside and grab some stuff here. So, let's get our lignite coal chunks out of here. I need to make pipes yet so I can adjust that but we're going to use these coal chunks as our fuel today so they smelt two items so they're going to be let's see coal does eight so this is a quarter of a coal so it won't be too bad <clears throat> And I guess I should put in what we're actually cooking today. So we have cold coke. And cold coke is one to one with carbon. So I have 14 of our granitic mineral sand. And we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into chunks. And we're going to put half of them in there with half of this. So six to seven. And this is going to be how we make our iron from here on out. Is going to be six chunks of cold coke and seven sand. Magnetite, whatever magnetite it is we're currently using. And you know what? I actually got matches from zombies. Let's just use them. There we go. So we're making iron for a couple things. One, we got the treated wood last time for making our tanks. So we need iron rods for that. And we are going to work on getting our tin alloy which we need two of them which note it says tin plate if we look up tin alloy which is taking a second here so if you look at the actual uh, plate it says tin alloy plate there but when you hold it in your hand, it'll say tin plate. And in the quest book, it says tin plate. <clears throat> I am don't know why, but it is tin alloy. It's something Greg can't fix because it's actually the Railcraft plate. And they call it a tin plate even though it's technically tin and iron together. So we're going to do those first. So as soon as we see this click over to iron, we're going to dump in a tin ingot. And if we look at how to make this, it will show combination of wrought iron and tin so let's drop that and it just took the tin out because it's not wrought yet uh, where is my yeah, back so yeah see that is an actual tin plate let's get that in there while I get my monkey wrench and turn this thing off. Alright, so I got one of my long iron rods I need. And I got two iron plates. Go ahead and throw them back in there. <coughs> and now we need to watch for this to actually change color. And then we'll throw it in. You can also use the 
thermometer to check it and make sure that it's at 2011, but you can also tell by the color. So once this gets heated up here, we're only at a thousand, so it'll take a minute here. And the nice thing is, even though we have extra iron in there, it's only gonna, it's a one-to-one -one recipe, so when we throw in the 110, it's gonna make the two plates we need and no issue. All right, and since we have so much material in there, it's going to go a little slow. Eventually we'll be able to change burning boxes and it won't be quite so slow. Um, we'll be able to go up to a steel and we can even go to a chromium above that, but you don't really want to use that unless you are doing a good amount of stuff because that is way faster than the uh, steel. All right, 16, and you don't want to use it unless you have, you know, automation that you know you know what you're doing, and you know it's going to work correctly. And then, once we get that done, I have these, which we're going to use to make our red alloy. All right, so you see the color. It should turn to a more peachish color is 1909 there and here in a second 19, there it is right there I just seen it change so now we dump that in there and we'll turn it off for the moment and we'll get these poured There we go, there is our first tin alloy plate. You see when we hold in our hand, it says tin plate. Although the name says tin alloy. Quite annoying, but we have it. And because we threw that in, it took it down just enough to get below the iron temperature here. So we're gonna turn this back on and we're going to quickly get the rods out of here. And then we're going to dump in the iron, or the copper and the redstone. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and dump that in there. Oops, I just poured a red stone. So now with this one, we put in four units of redstone, one unit of copper. And what we're looking for here is for it to drop. So you will see the contents of it drop down. And when it does so, that means that the redstone has infused into the copper and we'll have red alloy. And we need to pour this as a plate and whatever iron is left in there uh, we've gotten three four so there should be two iron no there should be one iron left in there and we're gonna leave it because it is gonna be awful close trying to dump in the next bunch and this will happen about 1450-ish. And because we have the extra iron in there, that's extra material that has to be heated. So when it does drop, and we go from having uh, 8, 9, 10 units in there down to 2, it's not going to heat up that much faster. Because instead of having two, we have three. And, well, iron is pretty decent at 
taking up some heat and that will give us time to get our copper out of, or our red alloy out of there and uh, throw in the next batch. I'm doing extra of what we need. Uh, you'll see for the quest here, we, only, we need four. I'm doing five. No particular reason, just I'm doing five. All right, what are we at? 13, so another 150 degrees, it'll be done. Should be just about there. There it goes. And um, I'm not sure what the hell we just got. Conductive iron. Damn it, Greg. I forgot about Ender IO's conductive iron crap. So my one iron just turned into conductive iron. Grrr. I've actually never done that before. So conductive iron is one redstone and one wrought iron. So that means we need to get one more iron or one more redstone to make up for that. So the only thing we should have in here right now is redstone and partial red alloy. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in that copper and all of the redstone. And... That was my last match. We've only used about half of that. So let's go see. Gems, we have, uh, we have yellow jasper right here. Pop that on there. And by the way, this is our wooden tank. We're gonna build it today. I guess I might as well pop them out of there. So we need 26 of them. I made 27 accidentally. Forgot I had extra lead in there. And extra treated wood. And then the other part we're going to need is, I do believe, like... We might take the soft hammer for this one. Let's see. Uh, saw and yeah, that needs a soft hammer. There we go. And we will hook that up here in just a bit. And I will use that other tank when I make another tank. All right. So I'm going to hammer this. And now we can make another split and tinder with that. Or, there we go. Now we just got to wait for this to heat back up because it is cold. And I don't know what in the world I'm going to do with this conductive iron. Not even really sure. Quality 2, speed of 6, 384. I'll probably turn it into a shovel. To tell you the truth, because it looks like it's pretty much just a wrought iron that has wasted my redstone, so I'll just turn it into a shovel later. Not gonna mess with it now. The one thing that kind of irritates me is I get these 
ones from mods you don't think about because they're not in your pack, and they still happen. All right, so this is going to take a minute. I will be right back when it is ready to pour. All right, so we are right about time to pour here. And I just thought about it. I think I might have misspoke when I said what was still in the crucible. It was three quarters of an ingot of red alloy and one quarter of an ingot worth of copper. That's what was left in there. There was no full ingot of anything. Because we had three redstone that we fused with three quarters of the copper. So then that left the one quarter left. Alright, so there we go. That is our that is our red alloy. Um oh there was a little bit that didn't get used. So it got too cold. Okay, I was going to say, there were, when I threw it in, the crucible was full. So there was a little bit of redstone that didn't drop. And so that little bit had dropped. Alright, so that gives us our red alloy. So we can hit our cookie there. Claim that, our thin alloy, claim our cookie for it, and now we're going to make a thermo sensor. We already have our sticky piston, and I do not need <coughs> red alloy wire for the way I'm going to set this up, and I'm not going to make all four. At least not for right now. So, if we look at the thermo sensor, we need fine red alloy wire. So we need foil. And we need four of them, so we need four foil. And we could get that out of one if we had a cluster mill. We don't have a cluster mill. So we're going to get two of them out of a red alloy plate. Also, note that there is a wire mill recipe for it as well that eventually one red alloy rod, which is half a ingot's worth, will make you four of these. So this is a expensive recipe but it's necessary at the time so the foil has to be hit on the small side so ink and there we go also, for some reason, oh, it does not. That used to not do that. And give me a second. I got the hiccups for some reason. Okay, that taken care of. Now we need to change this over to our wire cutters. And we need to cut that into four of them. We need our tin alloy plate here, and we need to split it and make a double tin alloy plate. So that will go there, these will go here, and our thermometer will go in the center. Now, redstone goes around like that, 
and that makes our thermosensor. But we can also use redstone gems so we don't have to break them down to redstone dust. We can go ahead and use them if we have them, the regular ones, not any other quality. So there is that. And now we can place this right on the front. It gives us a readout, tells us what our temperature is and what we're going to be doing now is giving this a bit of a, uh, actually, I need regular red alloy wire, which is a plate and wire cutters will give you one. So I'll do this. And so you know, redstone comes out of the sensor on all sides, including the front. And if you use your wire cutters, you will see it connected there, and I want to connect it there. And my pickaxe. All right, so take that out of there. I'm gonna save one piece of red alloy wire by using the actual block because the block will conduct a redstone signal through it. So that's why I only need three of them, not four. And we can also, um, trying to, think here. A piece of paper should work. Let's get a piece of paper and I need to make another one of those. Crud. I don't think I have anything else that would work for a plate right now. Well, you know what we can actually do? We can make a piece of paper with three of these without having to bathe it in water. So we can just do the old vanilla recipe plus a piece of paper. Paper works as a plate, so I can stick that on there and then I can put my lever on that. So now that will control my piston and I can also we need to change this over to a screwdriver and there are three places you can click on this with a screwdriver. You can click up here which will change it to alphanumeric mode, which will really confuse you if you don't know how that works. So don't do that. You can do it here on the buttons, which will give you an averaging thing that I don't mess with. So, um, wait a minute, that's not... Did Greg change that on me? Because that's the same as over here. Ah, there we go. Averaging over one value. I was off of the button. So, that's 101. That's 1. And 1 is what we want. We do not want it to average. So don't click the buttons. And then the other one is the one you already see. Which is, we can change it to percent mode which will give you a redstone signal according to a redstone signal in strength according to how hot the crucible is and how close it is to blowing up. 
this is greater than equals less than target. This is if you set it to a target mode. So if I told it I wanted to to output at say 400, it would set out redstone, which I think I might have boogered it with the Uh, no. Wait a minute. What are we actually at? Yeah, because there's no redstone signal. That's coming from there. And target mode should not have... anything on it right now. We're at 300, so it's not at its target. Go back to target. Hmm. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. I don't normally use the target mode, so I may be forgetting something. But I thought it output redstone when it hit its target or was in it increased in redstone as it got closer to it. And right now it's just putting out a redstone signal no matter what. And then the red ones, I honestly cannot tell you what the hell the red ones are. I have never figured it out. I've never used them. For 99% of the cases, you're never going to need them. So, and I would just ignore them. But the main one you will be using is this one, which is greater than, if we take this up to, okay, wait a minute. Hold on, do I have this going the wrong way? Uh, no. That's facing backwards. Which is the way it should be going. Let me try to replace it because that's definitely not working right. This out. Place it there. And now if the temperature is greater than 300, we should be getting a redstone signal right now. Because that is over 300, we can tell by doing, okay, it's 286. So, it is greater than 200. There we go. Forgot what ambient temperature is. Okay, so, if it's greater than 200, Redstone signal turns it on. So what we will set this for is like 2400 when we have a liquid fuel, which will be our creosote out there eventually. And then when it gets to 2400, it'll automatically kick it off. And then we can kick it off manually by doing that. You can also set it to that and that would set it to poor if it is set to uh, redstone. So if we take our monkey wrench and we set this to redstone mode and then auto pour on when we hit it with that Crucible Auto Input, Redstone, and this is all you need to have Redstone. You can also run it to the mold, but the Redstone will go through the crossing, so that'll work fine. Too. And I will explain these all much better when we actually set up a automatic Crucible for making iron 
and we'll also do one for bronze and other things, but that is your short overview of it. Now, I want to take this back. So, equals would be if we were at that exact amount. Less than is give us a redstone if it's less than that. And then the target mode. I'm still not quite sure why that's not. Unless it gives us a redstone signal. Unless it's at the exact target. It's doing six. So, screw it. Let's try it. It's another mode I never try. Or I never use. Aha, there you go. So if it's at that exact target, which I would think would be equals, since it's not really giving any redstone signal. Okay, if it's above the target, it's not giving a redstone signal either. So... Hmm... Wait a minute, that's greater than. I thought I was on target. Stop being stupid. Two. the end of temperature and it's not going off either way so if anybody knows exactly the right way to use that let me know because I obviously do not I thought I did but I obviously don't the only one that I use for the most part is that one right there. Afraid of that. Which is what we want. Although, right now, we just want it to tell us the temperature so we don't have to click on it with our thermometer anymore. Because we do not have a proper fuel to be running a shutoff. Go away. All right, so now we want to get our tank set up here. Um, I need to, my jug here. How much we got in here, 150? which means we cannot drink it. So we'll just dump it in the water there for now. And we're gonna pop that out of there. Um, next to, nah, I can't close it because there's something in front of it. Hold on. All right, close that. Now, Get these flowers out of the way. And we're going to go. I even looked around to make sure there were no creepers around me. Did it work? No. He must have been down in there. Sure. I hate creepers. Such a pain in the butt. And apparently, my backpack glitched. That's great. So, I don't have a backpack anymore. That's why all the stuff that was in my backpack was laying out here on the ground. So, that's just beautiful. Never had that happen before.
This is just an all around great day. Alright, that's all my stuff back on. Let's get this built. At least my coke oven didn't blow up. So we need to build a 2x3 structure. And we want the valve at the bottom. We're working with a liquid. If you're working with a gas, you may need it on the side or the top. The side will work for any gas. Um, but we're working with a liquid. We can put it on the side for a liquid too, but I like it on the bottom. Alright, so there we have capacity 432 buckets. Now I want to grab my funnel here. That way I can put my creosote in here. So now see 2000 liters in there. And let's get down here and we're just going to move this into there. So now it is empty. We can pop it out of there. And we're going to make a couple more pipes. So that and that. And we need our pocket tool set to a saw. And am I going to get these in the right order? Probably not. Uh. It is a saw, right? I'm not forgetting. Yeah, saw and saw camera. This way. The only way I didn't try. Alright. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this existing pipe. We're going to connect it right there. We're going to connect that there. And then you will see that our Coke oven is now completely empty. And we have 31 and a half in our tank. And then we're going to take this one. And we're going to put it right here, which will then output our creosote into that pipe. So now I'm going to make two more of these. And eventually we will run these into a liquid burning box. But, for right now, in case we need more treated wood, we're going to do it like that. And open this back up. And put our bathing pot back down. So, there. Now we have a storage for our creosote. I'm going to grab some cobble and fill in the stupid creeper hole. By the way, while we were out in the live stream the other day, I found a new bush. It is a blueberry bush. And I'm not really worried about any of the other ones. There's quite a few different ones. Like there's a white currant, black currant, red currant, there's cranberry, blackberry, not the kind you used to use to call people and take notes. 
There we go. Um, I know I'm missing something. But there's a few of them. And I'm not really worried about collecting any of them. But the reason why I got the blueberry is because blueberry can actually be used as blue dye. So if you juice your blueberry and make a blueberry juice, you can canner blueberry juice colors everything blue. So you'll see it works for any recipe that needs blue dye. And one of the things we need for the quest book is a crowbar and it requires blue dye. Now I could use lapis for this, I do have some, but well, why not use blueberries? So I got blueberries so I can start collecting them and make blueberry juice to make blue dye. Alright, and I think that's going to be it for today. Day. I do have my um, iron rods now, so I can upgrade my barrel over here. Get that done real quick. I need two more of these turned into wood like that and then I need a chest there we go and there is our upgraded iron bear item barrel which now in my bag here, grab a of tape. I need to, uh, on one, where it is, there we go. Set that so it does not output any longer, because otherwise it will put it on the floor. And we do not want it getting put on the floor. So we're going to pop that out. Let's see, we'll spill its inventory because I forgot to tape it. But that's fine, I can stand here and do this and put everything away. Go. Get this out of my hand so I can put the rest of them in there. There we go, 5,000. Now, we'll do that and it'll finish empty. So now we can hold another almost 5,000. And I have these two that I can use when I go on a mining trip. And now I need to make a new backpack before I do much of anything else. So, next time we're here, we are going to make a liquid burning box so we can hook up our. Um, free soap to our crucible so we can use that as a liquid fuel. I probably will do a live stream this weekend. I need to get some bronze made up and I've got a bunch of copper that needs to be cooked down and a bunch of tin that I already did. So I will probably Come on and live stream doing that, getting the bronze made up, and making a liquid burning box and getting the stuff ready for a auto crucible for iron and for steel. Because that is our objection objective for next week is make steel. So, I will see you guys hopefully this weekend. If not, I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Take it easy.